This is something a little different from my usual watercolours. A few weeks ago, I did an online retreat with a lovely artist called Lally Mel. It was an art journaling retreat and that was the result. I hope you can see the sparkles. I was pretty sceptical when I started, but actually by the end I thought, oh, I really want to add art journaling to my repertoire. So over the next months, I will be art journaling every so often, not every day, possibly not every week. But I want to document my process and share all the results with you. My name is Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist, usually, and I live in Berkshire and every week I share tips, tricks and techniques that I wish I'd known about ages ago. But this is a bit different. This is a start on my art journaling journey. This is a spread that I'll show you and I'll share some of my, not do's and don'ts, just my discoveries. So how to mix in watercolour with acrylics, with block printing, all sorts. A few weeks ago I did an online retreat with a lovely French-American artist called Lally Mill. I hope I've said that correctly. And it was all about journaling uh, with the idea of, of your dreams. I have never done art journaling before and I was a little bit sceptical, I guess you'd say, and I wasn't sure what to expect. And this is the result of that retreat. It's quite a messy page, but look, it's got sparkles. Totally different to the sorts of things that I usually paint, but that's okay. <laughs> so I went from being highly sceptical to being quite curious. Then I went back to sceptical again. Then I went back to excited. Then I went back to horrified as it got more and more messy. Then I went back to hmm, seeing possibilities. And I think there there are a lot of possibilities for me in the idea of art journaling. So I want to share my, my journey and see how it goes and how things develop. I guess the question is, why journal? You know, is it just a glorified doodle or is there some more point to it? Well, this I know I'm sharing this journal with you, but this is just for me. If I had done something that I absolutely hated, I don't have to show anyone. If I'd expressed an emotion in this that I was embarrassed by, I don't have to share it. So an art journal is a safe place and it's only for you. And that I think is really important because we often paint to show other people. Very deliberately, I a lot of my paintings are about sharing my awe at the world and my, my awe and wonder of the world and going, ah, oh, I've seen this and I think it's fantastic. Have you seen it? That, that's what my paintings are saying. Somewhere just for me is it's a safe place and it's somewhere to try new techniques. Could just use new colour combinations to see how they work. It's a place where you can use new materials. These sparkles are diamond dust from Stuart Semple that I bought I don't know, four years ago, and I haven't used because they are actually shards of glass and I am a little concerned about whether I'm going to cut myself, but no walking barefoot in the studio. It's a place to play. You don't have to be serious. Today is my birthday. Please don't wish me happy birthday because by the time you see this, it'll have been a long time ago. But I'm giving myself permission to play. It's my birthday. But they can be very serious sides to this or a more serious side as well you know it could be a place to process an emotion you know someone has really ticked you off and you can't say that to them for whatever reason a journal could be a place to express that it could be a place to to overcome artist block it could be something to help you make a decision if you've got a you know, you're at a bit of a crossroads, don't know which way to go. Maybe working through it, through a journal, could, could help. Might be a place to celebrate and have gratitude, uh, just to express your thoughts. So journaling could do all that. And I think this book will be a total mixture of those. What do you need? Well, you need a book. I think I've selected totally the wrong one. This is a handmade watercolour book that I did again two three years ago and it's got really rough 
quite thick handmade watercolour paper in it. If you're interested in how I made it, I'll, I'll put a link, but I haven't used it for anything. Now, the reason I think it's possibly the wrong one is I'm not sure how robust it is because this is going to get heavy. Look, I, I, that's probably got two or three layers on it and I think this will get thicker and thicker. So I have already made a note to myself to make sure I put collage across that central spine on every page. <laughs> Hopefully the collage will keep it together even if it starts to fall apart. This is the size I like because we're going to work right across that fold Obviously, you could work far smaller, a square book, it, it, that is up to you. It is nice to work across the fold because I think if you worked one page at a time, that would be quite distracting by the time you get to come and work on this page. So I think working as a spread makes sense. So this is a separate thought process, a separate day, a separate emotion, a separate play playtime. You need a few supplies maybe scraps of paper for collage if you fancy that you can use the paints watercolors or acrylics pens you know brushes whatever Just use what you've got don't go out and buy new things i mean if you're doing collage you'll need glue and possibly something like some gesso would be useful to make sure that you can work on top of anything that you stick on or something like matte medium could be useful for for sticking down and again make sealing things as you go along because we're going to work in layers but as i say this is not an opportunity to run out and buy 20 million new things now on the workshop she had this beautiful meditative space with a candle and little Oh, rose quartz hearts and things. I am not that person, but I have, you won't believe this, I have actually cleared a bit of space around here because I know this is going to get messy. So I think it's quite nice to prepare yourself and give yourself a little area to work in because this is a bit of time for yourself and your thoughts. If you do say affirmations or meditate or you have a religious belief, you can just take a deep breath and say that and do, do what is right for you. What I've decided I want to do today is actually celebrate some summer flowers. So I'm not going to try and come to some huge life decision or use this as an affirmation or anything. Got some sunflowers which sadly are coming to the ends of their lives but they are so beautiful. I thought today would be lovely to, to be inspired by these and capture them because I think they've only got about a day left of life. So that is going to be my inspiration. So I say it's nothing highfalutin. A blank page can be pretty intimidating. You know, where do you start? And I think it is lovely to start with some words. And it will also help you get into the moment and get into the place, especially if your head's a bit busy with things that you should be doing or you're feeling a bit naughty about taking some time out. And you don't have to do this all at once. You could do a bit, leave it, come back tomorrow, come back in a week. I'm going to grab a pencil, it's a 2B, and I'm going to start writing. So I'm going to, this can be a stream of consciousness. It doesn't have to be beautiful um, writing. You see, I'm just about to write, I love writing because I'm talking. I, I'm going to have to be quiet otherwise, and I'll read it to you. You could write it in ink, in huge, uh, well, not huge, but bigger words so that it all shows through at the end if you want. It could be something that you don't want anyone to see and it'll get covered up. Writing doesn't have to be perfect, as you can see. It doesn't have to have punctuation unless you do that naturally the spelling doesn't have to be right it is just to get rid of that blank page and to focus you on what you're you're thinking about so i've said i love sunflowers they're full of life well i've said live there uh, should say life and sunshine and warmth one of my favorite things uh, they make me a bit sad now because of ukraine 
uh, sunflowers with the symbol of, of Ukraine. And everyone painted them when the invasion happened. And now, does anyone remember or is it all forgotten? What's happening to all those refugees and can I do anything? And if you have a thought as you're writing or as you're doing this, it might be a good idea to have a piece of paper to the side to park some of those thoughts where you have a revelation, put it down so that it doesn't get covered and lost. I said, oh, I've had, these are a few of my favourite things, the song from Sound uh, of Music, isn't it? In my head all day, I was singing it in the car earlier, I won't sing it here. So perhaps that would be good here. And I've said at Denise's funeral, so she was someone who was very, very good to my sister when she was younger. Uh, they gave out sunflowers at the end and that was just beautiful. And I've got a photo of Alex, who's my, my son, by sunflowers we grew in the garden that were at least a couple of metres, 10 foot tall or something like that. And I just love them being taller than us. So that's what I've written. I'm going to do the first layer. So some of this is going to get covered over. We could go in with paint if we wanted to but I don't think so. I'm going to do some collage now. By the way, look, this is the dress I'm wearing today. How appropriate is that? Quite fancied using some of this paper. I got given some flowers over the weekend and they came wrapped in that. I said that I've got some music in my head, so I think some music on, on the page would be really nice. I can get sort of scrapbooking papers and I saw that and I just thought, oh, that's that's pretty. I saw this one and I thought, oh, maybe I could cut out a bird and incorporate I liked this blue with the yellow. Turquoise and yellow is such a sunny, gorgeous um, mix. Found some tissue paper. Now, if you haven't got a stash of stuff, don't worry. Start saving some. I found a bit of an old map. Start saving some, but don't worry. Again, don't dash out and get stuff just because you're starting to do this. But, you know, have a, have a bot. And with collage, I have to say that I think a torn edge looks so much nicer than a cut edge. So that's course is up to you. The thing is that if you tear from the front or the back sometimes you get a different sort of torn edge. I don't want this to be too busy. I learned from the, the previous spread that, that it was too busy and that annoyed me. I don't want too much texture either. An old map is actually quite strong as well and that can be enforced by seeing. I'm sure you already know this but paper has, has a, a grain to it so it will be easier to tear one way or the other. When you've got something that you're you're happy with. It's time to stick everything down. You can use just gosh ordinary white glue. You can use matte medium if you've got it. That's gloss gel. You could use that. When you're selecting your journal it's worth bearing in mind that it's going to have kind of water added to it. You want something that isn't going to fall to pieces. Oh, I quite like how that's gone transparent and you can see the writing through it. Don't know whether that will stay that way when it's dried or not. If you're concerned about getting glue or paint on previous spreads then you could always put a sheet of paper underneath and um, just to protect stuff. Overlap that, wasn't I? That was part of my plan to save my book. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> Didn't quite mean to do that much. Generally with collage, the rule is to put the glue onto the heaviest paper and stick it down that way especially if we're using something like tissue paper none of these papers is particularly thin but just to stop it falling to pieces in your hand doesn't matter at all if you get glue on the the, the front of the paper because you're going to put more paint and glue and gesso on top Just going to do this last little bit over here.
no need to worry about letting that dry i think i'm going to put some gesso on to knock back and hide some of this collage the gesso is just a, a primer this is a white one you can get clear ones and you can put it on with a brush you could put it on with a palette knife if you want texture i've said i don't want texture at the moment so i'm not going to do that you can use it to smooth off edges and just integrate your page a little Put it on with your fingers if you want. I quite like the way it sort of veils things and just knocks it back so it's not too in your face. Just with your gesso-y brush make sure you wash it out because that once it's dry it is, is permanent. I'm going to dry this because I want to put some paint on top but I want to let it dribble and I don't think it will dribble very well on this wet surface. While that's been drying, I've looked for some paints and I thought because part of this is maybe using up stuff that I don't use very often, that I would use acrylic paints. Years ago, I thought, oh, perhaps I should learn to paint with acrylics and, and have an alternative to, to watercolours. Uh, so I had a whole load of paints and I did it. It was all right. But it wasn't particularly me so this is a good opportunity to use some of those up love that color look at that against the yellow so that's definitely going on Ooh, ha -ha. makes a good noise what i want to do is let some of this dribble and drip just like that. Right. How that goes. I found this, um, what does it say, copper, which I thought would be rather nice, a bit lumpy. liking these rainy day sort of feel to it because the weather at the moment in the UK is a bit grim middle of summer that's starting to feel quite rainy for my lovely sunflowers this might be quite nice to do some coming in from the sides but I'll let these dry first and encourage that to go for a little wander so the point of this stage is just to play maybe follow your emotions in terms of colours, patterns, really build up an interesting layer, interesting marks. If you don't like anything, you can wipe it off promptly. Quite like that little splosh there. Probably too early. I'll just park that for the moment and think, I quite like that splosh, maybe I'll do some more later. Now, if you don't want dribbles, of course, you could do brush marks, you could do finger marks, you could do splatters, you could do whatever you like. We're just trying to make a really interesting, aesthetically pleasing background that we, we want to work on integrating all our thoughts and we're, we're responding this is really sort of an intuitive part of the thing so if you get a mark you don't like put another one if there's something hideous don't worry because we can cover that up seriously don't worry this is playtime this all needs to dry and then we're going to move on to thinking about our focal point which for me of course is a sunflower I really want these journal pages to have layers of meaning so I love the idea of layer upon layer and that's why I'm doing it this way so that we've started with the writing, we've put the collage, we've got colour, we're building it up so that things will glimpse through and maybe they'll disappear. I am going to paint that sunflower somewhere on this. You could use some more collage. So you remember those little birds I showed you earlier? cut one out 
and think, oh yeah, I'll use that as my focal point. There are a couple of things to consider when you're doing your focal point. There's a rule of composition called the rule of thirds. I mean, rules are there to be broken, so, you know, take this with a pinch of salt. But it's basically saying, and this goes back to, all Renaissance times. If you divide any piece of paper or any surface into three, horizontally and vertically, where those cross are really good positions for your centre of interest. And if you place important elements along the third lines, you will get a pleasing composition. And that stands true whether you're working on a square or a rectangle like this. Manage my thirds. Those intersections are important so if we look at this is obviously very long and thin our third lines are basically about there and about there so say i wanted to use this bird and i want that to be my center of interest it would be potentially a good place to put it i could put it lower down but then <laughs> my flowers off but I might want the centre of that to be on, on that centre of interest. The there. other thing is to look at what your focus is. So this bird, if I put it over here, well, it looks like it's about to flit off. I want to keep the viewer's eye, even if that viewer is you, within the picture frame. So putting it over here makes far more sense visually because then your eye travels around the rest of the image. The other thing is to think about balance. If you have something big over here, you think of your page as a seesaw. To balance it up, if you just have something here, maybe you want something over here as well. So again, so that your eye is kept within the frame and things don't feel out of kilter so what happens one side needs some sort of balance i don't mean identical but one big thing and maybe two little things or three little things another rule of composition is it's actually called fibonacci um, sequence and it's fibonacci was a, a renaissance mathematician and he did the sequence which is one two three, five, eight, etc. So you add that to itself to get two, one and two is three, two and three, five, eight. And it says that these number of items feels comfortable, feels harmonious. Four things feels wrong. If I had one big thing here and four little things here, it wouldn't feel good. But if I had two or three, it might feel that, it might feel better. Now, as I say, rules are there to be broken. And if you want to put, let's use this, something big, bang in the centre, that will really shout at you. That's a, look at me, look at me, I'm the most important, this is what you should be looking at. And that's fine, if that's your intention. But if you're looking for something more harmonious and calm, you might want to consider using those rule of thirds. So I am feeling that my sunflower, when I paint it, should be here. Preparation for that, I am going to use that gesso again. I think my sunflower is going to go around here. And I need a white background because I'm going to do it in watercolours. If you're painting in acrylics, you might not need to do this. I don't want it to be a sudden edge, so I'm just going to feather off those edges, wipe them off. I've used gesso and I'm not sure how the watercolour will go on top of it. 
but this is my experiment and playtime so it's fine i could have used some watercolor ground here which is like an absorbent gesso specifically designed for watercolor but hey that is in the house and not my studio so i am going to use gesso and hope for the best this is really ugly stage of the page when i was doing that retreat with lally mill i think she she called it the ugly stage or maybe was it oh someone else described it as the awkward teenager for phase so it doesn't quite know who it is yet that's fine it's going to grow up and it's going to come to some happy adulthood but you've just got to hold your nerve at this point while this was drying I was quickly priming um, some canvases with watercolour ground and I thought, well, seeing I've got a dirty roller, I might as well use it. So I am putting watercolour ground on this and it illustrates perfectly that you're allowed to change your mind when you're journaling. It's good because you're actually developing ideas as you go along and you're responding to to the journals so that appears to be dry and now i'm going to paint my sunflower sort of here-ish i think about that size because yeah these are quite large pages i am going to use these viviva color sheets and the reason i'm using these is simply i did a sunflower as a little test of these when i was doing a product review i'll put a link to that and the colors popped so beautifully that I want to use them again. So I've got my sunflower there, which is all oh, look shedding petals because it's out of water, poor thing. And with these colour sheets, you can just wet them and go sort of straight in. So I'm going to just see how we get on. I'm using, well, it's actually a brush from Meaden don't know what size it is it looks about a sort of 10 say I'm picking up that chrome yellow and then I'm going to drop in some of this yellow ochre and let it wander through those petals this is such a useful useful brush stroke so it's a point press and lift and you get the wonderful sort of petals just so simply of course if you wanted to use acrylics you could uh, do that very easily if you wanted to use colored pencils um, markers whatever media you want I would do it because remember I said right at the beginning that this is an opportunity to, to play and experiment, use different media, see how they mix, use things that you've had lurking in the, the paint box. This is just a little bit of burnt sienna. We've got a little mixing area here that's coated with something that stops it staining. And I want to mix the violet with some yellow to make a sort of brownie colour. The centre is really dark, so I'm just going to grab some of the black. What might be nice is to spray some of these edge of the petals. <laughs> to let it to get some soft edges and we need to think about the stalk remember what i said about balance so i'm putting another big leaf over this side to balance up the big leaf that's over there I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of table salt into the centre to get some interesting marks, I hope. Do you remember we had a teal splatter somewhere at one point? It's been hidden now, but let's just remember those splatters and remember we liked them. 
and maybe put some more in. I've been waiting for it to dry and while I've been doing that I've been working on some lettering. Just got some of the paper that I used for collaging. I have some little sets of printing blocks who I just printed out using pigment ink the words I wanted. Now you could cut them out of a newspaper, you could print them on your computer and cut them out, you could oh find sheets of them from shops, you can do anything. I just think it's nice to integrate some text and then we've got a little bit of a flow there and I've got some more of those flowers which I thought I could paste down. Frankly I can't be bothered to cut them out really precisely but I'll fade in the, the edges of them because they're not very dominant. This isn't quite dry but when it is I'll just scrape that extra salt off. And you might be wondering why I cut some words up. Well the real reason is that I put two E's in the middle of these. I looked and thought that's not right, what am I doing? So I've, I've cut up favourite to balance up the fact that I'd uh, misspelt these. <laughs> Just be aware that if you do printing blocks like this, not all printing ink is waterproof. If you put matte medium over it, it may run. I'm hoping that because this is on very thin paper, the fact that I've been horribly lazy and not bothered to cut them out properly, I ripped them out. I hope those rips will fade. So this is real play time. We can do what we like to this. Everything is dry-ish. I've got this really pretty tissue paper and I was wondering a few peacock feathers might be nice. Now what else can we do? I think a bit of shadow, a little emphasis around some of these words would be rather nice. I'm just using a pencil here. I've got some near colour. These are water soluble wax pastels. But what I could do if I want more of a shadow under this is you put some and then dissolve it away like that. It's not quite the right blue but it's the best I've got. I do wonder about using the near colour to do the dots, some horizontal ones. If they look too strong and stark we can always just um, put some water over the top and change them up. Can you see how I've done three areas again? I'm not deliberately doing everything in threes but I'm looking at balance all the time. I really want some turquoise dots. How going to do those. So this is the time to use your creativity. I'm wondering about being able to print with that. Let's check on a piece of paper. Oh those would work. I'd like a few random ones as well. I just like the dots because they pick up the dots of the music. Or maybe you've got a pattern or a motif that you want to use all the time, like bunting or fairy lights or dots or squiggles, and you might want to in include that, but maybe you want each one to be fresh and new when, you, when you're learning and developing your own style. Okay, I need to go careful at this point, because if I put anything wet over this, Remember these crayons are water soluble so they will move. If I wanted to do that I would need to seal it with some matte medium or something similar. I've got a Posca pen. What colour is that? Ivory. Not quite as harsh. Just for some finer marks really. And you can just see we're layering and layering. Um, can there be too much? I suspect there can. But just keep going until you feel that you, you've hit the spot that you 
you want. This is for you, so you only you can say whether it's too much or or not enough. Okay, a bit of scribble seems to be okay. And I think one final thing, which is a big drop of yellow there. So I think this page is finished. And look at my hands. So that's a sign of a good session. So just a quick recap of what we did. We thought about why we want to journal. And I just wanted to celebrate my lovely sunflowers before, look, they shed their final petals. But we thought that it might be for other reasons to be grateful, to process an emotion, just to try new materials. And actually, we did some of that in here as well. And it made me think of a few other of my favourite things that I put into here. And it's helped me just to take a little break and take some time for myself to play and have fun and just be in the moment. We started by writing to get rid of that blank page and to get some of the thoughts out of our head. We had a notebook to the side just in case something did occur to us that we needed to, to handle. We then went on to collage and paint and we dribbled the paint over and then we went for our centre of interest and we did think about composition. And then we put in some finishing touches with some words, some of our favourite motifs, in my case dots, and thought about how to bring it all together and how just to have fun and to make it joyful. I'm certainly going to carry on with journaling and see how long this poor book lasts for. I hope you'll have a go and see where it takes you.